If we set our hearts on the things of God and lay up our treasures in heaven, those little situations won't nearly mean as much to us as that. The uncommitted folks on keeping rather than giving. He had great possessions. You see the condition of his heart, can't you? He had great possessions and, Je possessions, and Jesus said, sell it, follow me. He didn't like it. In Mark 8, 36, it says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What good will houses and lands and possessions do this world when your life is over? I've seen a lot in this life, but I've never seen a hearse pulling you all. You can't take it with you. The only thing that will follow you into the life is the names of the souls that you helped win for Christ and the good work with the right heart that you did for Jesus. Everything else is going to be burned away. This man who came to Jesus was looking for a better method of getting what he wanted than surrendering to God so that God could make him a better man. We're too prone to look to God for greater things, greater ways and means to accomplish our goals. Whereas God is looking for us to surrender our lives and give our soul to accomplish His goal. In Jeremiah 7, 3 through 8, watch this. I'm starting to get excited now. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, mend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in the lying word, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. God never gives up on the uncommitted. He's always calling the uncommitted to be closer. He's challenging the uncommitted to become committed to Him. In 2 Timothy 2, 11-13, through it says, It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. We love that. We be dead with him. We shall live with him. We don't like that second part. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. We don't like that part. But that's a true sin. Matthew 10, 34 through 39. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I come to set a man at variance against his father, a daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Jesus said those words. Let's break that down. Bite size. Verse 34. Those that are committed to Christ focus on inner peace, not the temporal peace that man gives you. In 35 and 36. Those that are committed to Christ focus on a relationship with Christ rather than family and friends. Now certainly family and friends are important. We all know that. But if they're more important than your relationship with Jesus, you got it backwards. They must take a high priority, but nothing, including family and uh, children, can come before you and the relationship of God. In verse 37, those that are committed to Christ focus on love that is worth finding rather than the selfish love of man. What is real love anyway? Most people confuse lust with love or a physical attraction with love or feeling that this is right with love. None of those have anything to do with real love. True love is found only at the cross and in the heart of a committed, saved person. True love is giving without expecting anything in return. An unselfish act. And verse 39 says, Those who are committed to Christ focus on discovering the source of life rather than being the source. We are to all be committed 
to God, first of all. Matthew 22, 37 through 38. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Those who are committed, committed to God will not have any trouble meeting of their uh, other commitments. The pure love of God and the pure love for Him will keep us on the right path. There is an African pastor who was threatened by the rebels. And they uh, demanded him to renounce his faith. And told him if he didn't do it that they would kill him. He refused and the night before uh, they took his life, or should I say the night before he gave his life for Christ, he wrote, wrote a note. Here's some of the words. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. I am a disciple of His. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is secure. I am finished with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, mundane talking, and dwarf goals. I am no longer in need for preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, or popularity. I don't have to be first, right, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I live by presence, faith, love, patience, and the labor of love. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. And my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of the, my enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, or burn up till I've preached up, and prayed up, paid up, stored up, and stayed up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go till He comes, give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till He stops. And when He comes to get His own, He'll have no problem recognizing me. My colors will be clear. Now that's commitment, isn't it? Those are powerful words that are attached to Him. I hope those words are attached to you also. I ask, are you dying to live? Did you... Allow Jesus to crucify your life at the cross. If we will live this life in search of the truth of the gospel, in search for the true love of God, in search of the peace that passes all understanding, and in search of the commitment to Jesus Christ as our Lord, then we'll be ready for that life which is yet to come. At the moment of our death, we will enter into the glories of heaven. If we live this life in our own way, forgetting God, forsaking and rejecting His great offer of salvation, then we're already walking dead in our sin. The end of the life is only a step down into the deep, dark, terrible, eternal death, which you'll always be done. You can come to Jesus today, make the decision today to accept the plan of salvation by the blood shed at the cross by Jesus. Accept your death at the cross with Jesus, and by asking Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord and Savior. You don't have the promise of tomorrow. Nobody does. I encourage you to open your heart to Jesus Christ. To ask Him to forgive you of your sins. You ask Him to come into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. You can do that right where you sit. I just ask afterwards, come up share it with me. I love to have someone share the love of life-changing decisions. He will save you today. There's a promise. There's your promise. How many of y'all remember how many promises in the Bible? <laughs> Praise God. There you go. You know why it's important to remember that number? 7,487 promises of God right here in the Bible. The Word of God is inherent. It's, it's inspired by God. Because you know what? On Wednesday you're walking down the road and God, God allows a problem into your life and you say, Oh my goodness, there's a problem. You know what, Lord? You got me 7,487 promises right here to fight that. I just need one of those promises to defeat that problem. 